time to match wits with the Tri-State's top high school students on WOWK-TV's Varsity Sport of the Mind, High Q. Now your host for High Q, Ernie Anderson. Thank you and welcome everybody to our weekly competition. We're the third of our four quarterfinal games. We have two previous winners who have each won two games. As a matter of fact, these are two of 11 teams in the Ohio Valley Academic Conference. So they've met each other in other play other than here on High Q. Should be a good match. Let's get started to meet them. First, the Varsity Scholars from Ironton High School, Ironton, Ohio. David Jenkins, and I'm a freshman. Philip Sutton, senior. Kathy Allen, sophomore. John Payton, senior. And here to coach Ironton are Susan Sheridan and Debbie Douglas. Pleasure to have you back with us, ladies. Thank you. And now let's meet the varsity scholars from Fairland High School, Proctorville, Ohio. Jason Mayberry, Jr. David McWhorter, Sr. Tiffany Nelson, Jr. Johnny Hall, Sr. And here to coach Fairland is Eddie Capper. Pleasure to have you back with us. And we'll be back to start today's game right after this. IQ is brought to you by Ashland Oil. We care about you in everything you do. And by Marshall University, home of the Jaeger Scholars. We'll be back to start the game following these messages. This is Dr. Robert Walker, young, energetic, a motivator. Named the physician who most influenced the Marshall University Medical School class of 1985. He counsels and advises in class in the hallways, molding the next generation of family physicians. After his own medical education, Dr. Walker came to the Lincoln County Primary Care Center in West Virginia, then to Marshall's Medical School. Wherever he goes, he strikes sparks of enthusiasm and caring. And at Marshall, the sparks are flung. High school graduation can be the basis of a better life. And at Ashland Oil, we know a good teacher makes a difference. Hey, there's Mr. Adams, our junior high science teacher. Mr. Adams, how you doing? Great. By the way, I'm really proud to see that all of you are graduating. <laughs> Sometimes you made me wonder. Because <laughs> you always made us study. <laughs> Ashland Oil supports programs that improve the quality of teaching. In Ashland, America, we care about you in everything we do. Just a reminder that the bigger your ad is, the more it gets noticed. But when people see a big ad in the official GTE Yellow Pages, they see it all year long. TV and it's taking America by a storm. Why are millions tuning in? Is it the host, Pat Sajak, with his boyish good look? Or perhaps it's the stunning Zanna White? This is Melanie Walter. Join me as I travel to Los Angeles to take you backstage at the Wheel of Fortune. Monday at 6, here on Channel 13, Action News. And welcome back. Judging today's competition is Steve Hensley, Assistant Dean of Students at Marshall University. Pleasure to have you with us, Steve. And now let's review the high Q rules. The game consists of two types of questions. Toss-ups worth 10 points each and bonuses worth a stated number of points. On a toss-up, you must signal and be recognized before answering. The right answer earns your team 10 points and a chance at the bonus. A wrong answer and the question goes to your opponent. You may interrupt the toss-up, but if you do, you must answer immediately. Interrupting with a wrong answer will cost your team five points, and the question is finished for your opponent. You have three seconds to answer a toss-up, five seconds for each bonus or part of a bonus. The game is played in seven-minute halves. If a half ends while a question is being asked, that's it. If you're answering a question when the half ends, you may complete that answer or part of an answer only. All questions used on HiQ are researched and authenticated by the staff of the College Bowl Company, Incorporated. All decisions of the moderator and judges are final. Okay, teams, are you ready? There's the whistle to begin. We're playing for a 20-point bonus. Here's your toss-up. 30 days has September, April, June, and November. But there are two pairs of consecutive months in which each month has 31 days. For 10 points, name either pair. 
Allen Ironton. August and July. That's correct. The other, December and January. 20-point uh, bonus try now. An effort of the body's respiratory system to overcome retention of excessive carbon dioxide is manifested in an involuntary muscle response that is often considered a breach of manners unless adequately concealed. For 20 points, what is this physiological response and faux pas? Yawning. That's right, for 20 points. Another 20-point bonus try. Everybody yawns. Here's your toss-up. The AAU is one of the largest sports governing bodies for 10 points. Peyton Ireton. Amateur Athletic Union. That's it. A chance to add 20 now. Euripides wrote the Phoenician women and Balfe wrote the Bohemian girl for 10 points apiece. Give me these other titles referring to nationalities or countries of origin. A classic of children's literature by Johann David Weiss. England's Fables. Oh, that's Swiss Family Robinson. How about a best-selling novel by John Fowles? Fowles, F-O-W-L-E-S. No answer. The French Lieutenant's Woman. No credit. 20-point bonus for this toss-up. He defended Loeb and Leopold in their 1924 murder trial. And Eugene Debs. Sutton Iron. Darrow. Darrow is right. Chance to add 20. Now, IBM may finally have some competition as two of its major competitors have recently merged to form the country's second largest computer conglomerate. For 10 points each, name these two corporations. Honeywell and Burroughs. Well, Burroughs is right. Sperry is the other corporation. You had one for 10. 30-point bonus for this toss-up. For 10 points, what are the twin terms that refer to the systematic contraction and relaxation of the muscles of the heart? A quarter fairland. Uh, expansion, contraction. No, Ironton. Sutton, Ironton. Diastolic and systolic. Yes. A chance to add 30 now. Pete Rose now has played in more Major League Baseball games than any other player in history. For 10 points each, what three greats, two now retired, one deceased, are in second, third, and fourth places in number of games played? Lou Gehrig. Carl Yastrzemski. And Ted Williams. Well, you had Yastrzemski. The others were Hank Aaron and Ty Cobb. So you had one for 10 points, 20 point bonus for this toss up. After writing several successful melodramas, he began a new career as a children's writer with his Mother Goose in prose. His subsequent, The Wonderful Wizard of Oz was his greatest. A quarter fairly. Bomb. Bomb is right and you're on the board now and a chance to add 20. Here's a question on Sam's. For 10 points apiece, tell me what Sam defeated the Mexicans at San Jacinto. Mm -hmm. Houston. Right. What Sam, cousin of John, was an early adherent to the idea of American independence? Adams. Adams is right for the full 20. 30-point bonus for this toss-up. A jackrabbit can attain a speed of over 40 miles per hour. For 10 points, what animal clocked at almost 900 feet per hour proverbially finishes first? Peyton Ironton. The tortoise? The tortoise or the turtle. 30-point bonus now for 10 points each. Which kind of fish shares its name with a roost for a bird? Fish. No answer. Perch. How about a person with sharp ability in a certain area? No answer. A shark. How about a type of license? Hunting. Permit. So, no credit on that bonus. 20-point bonus. Here's your toss-up. This commercial spokesman promotes only one product, but has become rich and famous enough to be profiled on TV's Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. For 10 points, name this star of commercials for Nine Lives. A quarter, Farrell. Morris. <laughs> Morris, the cat. 20-point bonus try now, Fairland. Anything that moves over the surface of the Earth, such as wind or water, tends to curve in one direction in the northern hemisphere and in the opposite direction in the southern hemisphere. For 20 points, does it tend to curve in the right or left in our hemisphere? The right. The right is right. 20-point bonus for this toss-up. Alexander Hamilton and Benjamin Franklin are the only two non-presidents on bills up to $100. For 10 points, what is their combined worth? Sutton Ironton. $150? No, Fairland. 
A quarter fairly. Seventy dollars. No, a hundred ten. Hamilton's on the ten. Franklin on the hundred. <laughs> Toss up. During John Adams' presidency, the U.S. very nearly went to war with France because of sabotage, a request for an outrageous loan and bribe, and three unofficial. Rep Sutton Ironton. The X Y Z affair. That's it. And a chance to add twenty now, Ironton. When Queen Victoria learned of a recent invention, she reportedly said, "Clever people, these Americans." I don't know if she said it like that, but for five points each and a five-point bonus for all three, who invented the air brake? Pullman? No, George Westinghouse. How about the process for the vulcanization of rubber? Goodyear? That's right. The first passenger elevator. Otis? Otis is right. Good crossword puzzle workers there, so you had two for ten. Toss up for a 20-point bonus. If a Parisian tourist wanted to visit New York's equivalent of the Bourse for ten points, where would you take him? McWhorter, Fairland. To Subway. No. Ironton? Peyton Ironton. Metropolitan, Metropolitan Museum of No, the Stock Exchange or Wall Street. Bonus, or toss up for that 20-point bonus for ten points. Which of the following would you be most apt to eat? Sodium thi thiosulfate. Sodium hydroxide or sodium benzoate? McWhorter, Fairland. Sodium benzoate. Sodium benzoate. It's a preservative. A chance to add 20. The castle was called the Enchanted Hill. Its builder and owner was William Randolph Hearst. For 20 points, where in California can it be found? Answer? Beverly Hills. No, nope. San Simeon. 30-point bonus for this toss-up. For 10 points, name the novel by Aldous Huxley, from which this passage... A quarter, Fairland. Okay. Time, Ironton, five-point penalty. Uh, with this passage... <laughs> <laughs> Brave New World is what we were looking for. That's the end of the first half. We'll be back to talk to our team members right after this. professors are many faceted people serving in many ways. Not only does Dr. Christine Berry influence the lives and development of business college students at Marshall, but she also helps build a better life for us all through such work as organizing this global trade conference in Charleston. Christine Berry, striking sparks of intellectual and business growth. And at Marshall, the sparks are flying. For the past few years, Ashland Oil has been stressing the need for quality education, and we're beginning to see some improvements. Remember, class, the computer is nothing more than a tool, but you must learn how to use it correctly. Now, we see improvements like these throughout Ashland's America, but much more needs to be done. We can have this and more, or we can return to this. We'll continue to do our part. Will you do yours? In Ashland's America, we care about you in everything we do. This is the sound that earned them 16 gold records. Doug Clifford, Stu Cook, Tom Fogarty, and John Fogarty. Credence, Clearwater Revival. is the one, the ultimate collection, Creedence Clearwater Revival's greatest hits on three LPs or two cassettes. This is your last opportunity to buy TV's biggest selling album at the final price of just $14.95. Call or right now to ensure delivery. Supplies are limited. To order, use your credit card and call toll free 1-800-228-1080. That's 1-800-228-1080. Or save COD charges and send just $14.95 plus $2 shipping and handling to Creedence Clearwater Revival, PO Box 1448. Huntington, West Virginia. Don't delay. Call now. All right, welcome back. At halftime, we've validated the score, and we find a pretty good game in progress. Ironton leads Fairland 110 to 65. Now, here in our third quarterfinal game, as we've done in the uh, previous two, we're going to talk to each of our team members, and uh, we'll go to Ironton and ask David uh, what sort of hobbies he has. Well, mostly I enjoy playing the piano and listening to classical music. Wow. Are you uh, fairly uh, productive on the piano? Mm. 
Do well? Barely, I'd well, say. Barely. Well, that's fair to partly cloudy, probably. <laughs> and uh, Philip as team captain. I like to play basketball, and I collect baseball cards. Who's the most valuable one you have, do you think? Mm, we got, I don't know, it's hard to say. <laughs> have any of the Mets? That's my team. Yeah. Yeah. About the time this airs, I guess baseball will be back in uh, progress. Erin, Kathy. Oh, I like to run and just read books and stuff. You run while you're reading a book? No, I, no, I run. Like, yeah. You run away from trouble? What is it? You just like to run. Keep in shape. Lord knows I need to do that, too. And, uh, John, what are your activities? Well, I play uh, sax, and I listen to uh, older rock and roll music. Older rock and roll? Like, uh, do you have a favorite sax? The Beatles. Mm, you like uh, David Sanborn in the current, he's in the jazz world currently. No, not particularly. He's a, I like, uh, <laughs> he's my favorite. Oh. I like, uh, probably blues more than blues. jazz. Okay, well, that's wonderful. You have very varied interests, and uh, good luck with you in the future. And let's go to Fairland, Proctorville, Ohio, and uh, find out from Jason what sort of activities he enjoys. Uh, swimming, playing computer games, and playing tennis. Well, he's a fairly athletic young man, eh? Yeah. And uh, David, uh, your interests lie... I like to study astronomy and play tennis. And play tennis. I didn't know that of you. Play tennis, eh? and study astronomy to be an astronomer. an astronomer. Well, that probably follows, I guess, rather than a grocery store clerk or something. And Tiffany, I love that name. What's uh, your activities like? Um, I like photography and reading and listening to music. Journey's my favorite group. Journey, ah, my, the Journey and Huey Lewis. There's no better singer in the whole wide world than Steve Perry. Right. And uh, Johnny, what are your activities after school? Uh, I like to golf, play basketball, and run track. So another sportsman. You ever just like to kick your shoes off and do nothing? Sure. Yeah, well, no, you always got to study. You study, study, study. Well, that's a little bit more about both of our teams. And teams, we're about to begin the second half of your quarterfinal match. And, of course, the team that wins this goes into our semifinals. And uh, if the uh, whistle blows while I'm asking you a question, that's the end of the game. If it blows uh, while you're answering, you can complete that one answer. And, of course, the team that's ahead when the final whistle blows wins the game. Good luck, teams. Playing for a 30-point bonus for this toss-up. For 10 points, name the woman who was called the angel of the battlefield during the Civil... McCord or Fairland? Not in jail. No, 5-point penalty, Ironton, during the Civil War, and who organized the American Red Cross? Sutton, Ironton. Clara Barton. Clara Barton is right. Chance to add 30. Krista McAuliffe was probably the best-known crew member of the final Challenger mission, even though she was the only non-astronaut aboard. For 10 points each, name any three of the six other astronauts on that disastrous mission. Smith, Scully. Smith, Scobie, and Anazuka. That's correct. Well, you got that one. The others were McNair, Resnick, and Jarvis. You had them on, uh, the, the three you needed for 30. 25-point bonus for this toss-up. Some sensitive souls in the Kremlin were mightily offended by its, by its premise and promised to make life uncomfortable for the ABC Moscow Bureau if the network went ahead with this miniseries. Mayberry, Fairland. America. America is it. The chance to add 25. Now, Winston Churchill described it as the worst disaster in British history when General Percival surrendered his 16,000 British, 14,000 Australian, and 32,000 Indian troops to the Japanese. For 25 points, in which island city were those troops trapped? Okinawa. Okinawa. Answer. Okinawa. Singapore. 20-point bonus for this toss-up. This 750,000 square mile body of water washes the coasts of at least 12 Latin American... Quarter, Fairland. The Gulf of Mexico. No, five-point penalty, Ironton. Uh, at least 12 Latin American and West Indian republics. For 10 points, name it. Allen, Ironton. Pacific. No, the Caribbean. Toss-up. The flower's seeds are edible and rich in oil. It's the state flower of Kansas. McWhorter, Fairland. Sunflower. Sunflower is right. Chance to add 20. In winter, bats and woodchucks do essentially what certain snails and lungfish do in the summer. For 10 points each, what one word term describes what woodchucks and bats do in the winter? Hibernate. Hibernate. Hibernate is right. Now, what's the term to describe the summertime dormancy of lungfish? Answer. Hibernate. Estivate. So you had one for ten. Twenty-five point bonus for this toss-up. Pope John Paul II succeeded John Paul I. Who succeeded Paul VI? 
Who, for 10 points, succeeded whom? Alan, I. Paul the Fourth. No, Fairlin? Mayberry, Fairlin. Um, Urban the 16th. John the 23rd. Toss up. A 100 watt bulb emits 1 billion ergs per second. For 10 points, what specifically emits 4 times 10 to the 33rd power erg? A quarter of Fairlin. The sun per second. Chance to add 25. The name's the same. The first Greek poet of the new comedy, the faithful husband of Bocchus in Greek mythology, a Greek citizen of Colossa, to whom St. Paul wrote an epistle, urging him not to punish an escaped slave, and a book in the New Testament. For 25 points, what's the common name? Answer, John Philemon, between Titus and Hebrews. 20-point bonus for this toss-up. In Shakespearean drama, Lear is the father to Cordelia, Goneril, and Regan. For 10 points, in The Merchant of Venice, who is father to Jessica? Mayberry Farrell. Shylock. Shylock is right. A chance to add 20. If no presidential candidate receives a majority of votes in the Electoral College for 10 points apiece, which governing bodies choose the president? The House. House of Representatives. That's correct. The Vice President. The Senate. The Senate is right. For the full 20, score Titans, 25-point bonus, toss-up, the term's the same. The location of a photographic lens and legal proceedings from which the public is excluded. For 10 points, what's the two-word phrase? A quarter, parallel. Closed court. No, Ironton. Allen, Ironton. Closed lens. In camera. Toss-up. Fidel Castro has been president of Cuba since New Year's Day, 1959. For 10 points, whom did he oust? A quarter, fairly. Batista. Batista is right. A chance to add 25 and tie the score. The Iliad tells the story of the wrath of Achilles and its disastrous consequences in the Trojan War. For 25 points, what great British epic poem by John Milton tells the story of Adam and Eve, their temptation and their fall? Paradise Fall. That's correct. For 25 and a 30-point bonus for this toss-up, the three-word phrase I'm looking for, three words, describe the arrangement of squares on a checkerboard and the ordinary members of a labor union. For 10 points, what is it? Peyton Ironton. Uh, grid. No? Fairland? A quarter Fairland. Rank and file. Rank and file is right. 30-point bonus try. Chemist refers to adenosine triphosphate as ATP. <coughs> now, for 10 points apiece, provide the set of initials that serves as scientific shorthand for each of these names and terms. The tracings produced by an apparatus designed to detect and record electrical changes in the brain cell. EEG. EEG. Answer? EEG. That's right, EEG. Either of the nucleic acids which serve as carriers of genetic information. Answer. DNA. That's right, or RNA. A stage in the normal sleep cycle named for a certain muscular movement. Answer. R-E-M. That's correct, for the full 30. 20-point bonus for this toss-up. British police were forced to seal it off in June of 1986 in order... A quarter fair. <coughs> Heathrow Airport. No, five-point penalty, Ironton. In order to protect it from assorted hippies and druid priests who annually gather there to celebrate... Peyton Ironton. Stonehenge. Stonehenge is right. 20-point bonus try now. I'll give you the time and place. For 20 points, you tell me what famous event occurred. It happened on February 15, 1898 in Havana. The sinking in the main. That's correct for 20. 20-point 20 bonus for this toss-up. In Tolkien's The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit, the residents all live for 10 points in what fictional play? Jenkins Iron. Middle Earth. Middle Earth is right. A chance to add 20. Now, on a mountain climbing trip, you climb and stand on the top of the highest mountain in each of two different states. For 10 points apiece, in what state are you when you climb Mount Rainier? Washington. Washington? That's correct. When you conquer Mount Washington. Alaska? Nope, New Hampshire. You had one for ten. We're playing for a 20-point bonus toss-up. Gregory, Charles, Leo, Alfred, Alexander, Frederick, and Catherine were all the greats. That's the end of the game. We'll validate the score. Be back to talk to our team members right after this. Welcome back. We've validated the score, and after the smoke has cleared, we find Ironton wins in a squeaker, 200 to 195 over Fairland. So, uh, Ironton, you will uh, now go on to the semifinal match and meet the winner of next week's competition between Lawrence County from Louisa, Kentucky, and Paul Blazer of Ashland, Kentucky. 
in our final quarterfinal match on high cue. So join us next week, won't you, for that. For all the production crew, I'm Ernie G. Anderson. Thank you for watching. So long, everybody.